Hello and welcome to your recipe for financial success with me, Emma, and my colleagues, Becky and Julie. In each episode, we'll be bringing you a list of ingredients to help you cook up a storm and master methods to finesse your finances. We'll be helping you expand your repertoire and hopefully teach you a few new skills along the way. So, clear the counters and get your mixing bowls ready for today's recipe. Let's get started. Hi guys, how are you both today? All okay, thank you. Not too bad at all. All good here too, thanks. So I had a phone call earlier on today with um, about regarding the um, igloo that we were going to be go- going to do in November, but obviously lockdown meant that it got cancelled. And I've rebooked for us to go right on Christmas. So we've got ourselves booked into an igloo at the Assembly House for a winter ski apri meal, uh, literally in the week before Christmas. Ooh. I hope it snows. That would be so cool. Imagine being in an igloo and it's snowing. Mind you, I guess we always, we need to caveat that with subject to government guidance. Hopefully we'll be able to get there. I'm more interested to find out what a ski a pre menu is. <laughs> oh, it looks really nice. I'll have to share it with you later on. I should look forward to seeing that. Get my uh, taste buds tingling. <laughs> I did think we could all dress up, but maybe we should just go in ski clothes instead if we actually owned any. Yeah, if we actually owned any. (laughs) And then we're definitely going to need the snow to actually be able to get there on our skis. Ah, yeah. To be fair, there's a reason why I've never skied. Yeah, me too. You've seen the second uh, Bridget Jones film. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. That's what I imagine I would be like on a pair of skis. (laughs) I don't think I'd even be that good, to be honest. (laughs) At least you get some speed up. (laughs) (laughs) This is it, definitely. Oh, okay. So shall we um, shall we get on with it for today then? Yeah. So in this week's episode, we are dusting off our Christmas budgeting tips. So Julie, do you want to start off by telling us your number one top tip? Thank you, Becky. I think the best tip that I can give for anybody this Christmas is to make sure that you plan ahead. It's so important to make sure you know what you're going to be doing, what your budget is and what you're going to be spending it on. And I think if you can do that, then you'll have an amazing Christmas without the worry of having debt at the end of it. So if that's your first top tip for um, budgeting at Christmas, you must have some more. Come on, Julie, what's the next one? I have. Um, I've kind of covered this in a few areas. So I think that I'm going to look at presents as my first option. And I think one of the things about buying presents is it's like this is where you really need to think about your budgeting, making sure that you have enough money or, or what your budget is. You know, how many people have you got to buy for? And what is your budget per person? And I think getting that planned out is really, really important. And if you find that you haven't got enough money, I mean, I don't know about any of you, but in lockdown, I went through all my wardrobes and I sorted through my clothes and found lots of items of certainly dresses that I haven't worn for years. And unfortunately, due to that old Corona stone, don't fit me anymore. And what a great opportunity to sell those off on eBay or on Facebook. And that will help to get some extra funds together to pay for whatever your Christmas presents are going to be this year. That sounds like a really good idea. I know I think I um, can join you with the Corona Stone. <laughs> so I expect uh, if I have a rummage through my wardrobe, I will too find some some dresses that I could probably uh, sell on to a new home. What about you, Emma? <laughs> I must admit, I sorted out my wardrobe and I think three quarters of it is um, dresses for going out. And I'm not sure when I'm next going to go out. So maybe (laughs) it's a good idea to get rid of some. But I agree as well with the planning. Um, I know when I've had a look at Christmas shopping that I see something and I think, oh, that's nice. I'll just get that. Oh, I'll just get that too. And it, it can so easily spiral out of control. So definitely planning is a good one. Yeah, it's easy to get carried away as well, isn't it? When you, like you say, Emma, just going, oh, yeah, just add that one on or just get that as well. I think it's especially hard when you've got children as well because you go out and you go, oh, I'll just get another little one. And then if you've got more than one child, it's even worse because if you buy one thing for one child, then you then need to buy an equivalent present for for, for the other child as well. And it, and it soon starts to build up. I always remember my mum saying that she not only had to spend the same amount on each of us, but we also had to have the same amount of presents as well because it wouldn't be fair if one had more than the other. So that's where it can kind of get out of control quite easily. That sounds a lot like my mum as well. <laughs> and to be fair, when we were little, we used to take it in turns to undo our presents. So if it was like, if I'd have been sitting there at the end and my brother still had six presents to open, I suspect I wouldn't have been the happiest of child in the world. 
probably not. No. <laughs> oh, this is it. So, but and I do think that Christmas is definitely, and the presents is definitely for the children. It is definitely a magical moment to open Christmas presents on Christmas morning with children there. Definitely is. Yeah. But what about but what about the adults? And I think one of these, an idea that's been coming about in the last few years, which I think actually started in offices, I, I haven't actually tracked down the history of this, but it's Secret Santa. So it used to be in the office when you've got like a load of people, what would happen is you put the names in the hat. Nowadays, there's number generators or name generators that you can use. You'd all pull out a different name and you'd all be given a budget. I remember the days when £5 was a budget, but this year they're all up to £10 in the office. And then you'd go away and you'd buy an appropriate gift for that person. And I'm finding more and more people nowadays are doing it at home. Rather than buying a pair of socks for Uncle Eric and then Uncle Eric buying you a pair of socks back, or you exchange the same £10 voucher and you then pass it backwards and forwards to each other it's um it's a bit of a different way of doing it and it certainly is it's actually cheaper and means that you it's a bit of fun you can turn into a piece of a bit of fun in the household rather than socks socks and more socks there's always that dread though isn't there of pulling the one person out of the hat that you'd have no idea what to buy for them I know this is all oh no I've got Uncle Eric damn (laughs) sorry for anyone who has an Uncle Eric (laughs) I'm sure that he's very easy to buy for socks and another thing that I've seen recently as well is people are actually doing a secret Santa at home but rather than getting a name they have to buy a generic gift which could be appropriate for anybody in the room and then make it into a game on Christmas day for then giving the gifts out like that not sure oh. if either of you two have done that before. I haven't heard of that one before. That yeah, sound, sounds quite interesting. It must be really hard to buy a gift that's generic for everybody. It would have to be food or drink. Unless, of course, you've got the aunt who doesn't drink. And then that's going to be a real problem. <laughs> yeah. Or the, yeah. got a chocolate allergy. I mean, I once knew somebody with a chocolate allergy. Oh, my God. I don't think I'd survive. No. Oh, I blimey. didn't know it was a thing, but it no, is. I didn't. I didn't know that it was a thing. <laughs> Um, I guess you could get like board games, maybe. Yeah, that's but a good idea. Yeah, and there's a risk if you've got say seven or eight of you to buy a board game that no one has. You're gonna be stretched a little bit, possibly. Or maybe you could make something. Everybody loves a homemade gift. Well, no, this is very, very true. And actually, that's one of the items on my list, Emma. So I haven't been reading your list, promise. <laughs> so making a homemade gift is also there. So things like cakes, cookies, that's good if you're going to be seeing the person quite close to Christmas, because um, I'm pretty sure that, well, actually, nobody would want to eat anything that I cook, to be honest. But one of Emma's lovely cupcakes, I'm sure wouldn't last if she gave them to me a week before Christmas. No. I hope they wouldn't last that long anyway. (laughs) That's it. But one of the things that I did this year, I found, I also found in lockdown that I had more time and I I became a bit of a forager and I was out and about collecting fruit. I don't know why you two are laughing at me being a forager. It's just (laughs) such a funny word. (laughs) So so I was out and about picking blackberries and elderberries and... um, and, and Victoria plums. It was a good year oh, for the plums wow. this year, well and done. making blackberry vodka and um, and uh, elderberry gin and all sorts of other delights, which I am planning on bottling up as presents. But um, yeah, guys, if you get them, look surprised. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll forget that we had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the party's going to be at your house anyway with all those drinks. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I've got so much of it. It's gonna, I hope it's going to last for another couple of years. I don't think I know enough people to actually give it all out to. Blimey, how much foraging <laughs> did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of foraging. I think I've got about 16 litres of the stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're in for a good (coughs) Christmas or is that our Christmas present sorted for the next 10 years Becky (laughs) oops awkward (laughs) I think it might be definitely um also going back to what you could spend obviously getting money and saving money on presents is using things like um other techniques could be like buying obviously not for this year because it's too close to Christmas but for next year like buy presents in the January sales Or buy one gift a month throughout the entire year. So split out the presents, split how many people you've got, or two gifts a month, depending on how many people you have to buy for, and then split that cost over 12 months. That sounds like a really good idea. And with the January sales as well, you can normally pick up some good like gift sets that, as a rule, don't change from one year to the next. So 
you might as well get them while they're at sale price. Definitely. Another thing I always buy in January is wrapping paper because I always think it's so expensive and it's nice to be able to have the pretty ones, but they're they're a fortune. So if you wait until January, you can buy up all the really pretty ones and save them for the next year. That's a really good plan. Last year, we actually used magazines in the office as wrapping paper for our Secret Santa. We did. Who knew the Financial Advisor magazine was so interesting? (laughs) (laughs) And at least it disguises it as well. So... Nobody yes. knows whose is whose. Yeah, that's true. No one can think, oh, I know Becky's got that wrapping paper. This one must be from her. This is it. Or think, oh, who found that cheap wrapping paper and wrapped my present in that? I am a bit of a wrapping paper judger, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, that's an extra pretty bow. Who did that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely not me if it's a bow. <laughs> no, that'll be you, Emma. You're the bow girl. <laughs> or if you don't want to buy all your gifts and you've got nowhere to store them, put money away each month for Christmas gifts. I mean, certain bank accounts nowadays have pots in them where you can actually put money each month into a pot. Or if anyone read Eddie's blog the other, the other month, you'll see that Eddie collects his money in jam jars. He has a jam jar for his Christmas money for his presents that he's going to buy for people. I hope you're not going to be taking his jam <laughs> jars to put your jam in. Well, um, no, I'm sure that I'll let Eddie keep his jam jars. That will be fine. So. Another good idea is also um, a homemade gift voucher. And that would be like offering something, a service. So, for example, like a car wash or like maybe a back massage, normally to your loved ones rather than Uncle Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Although Uncle oh, Eric... my secret Santa out the window, isn't it? <laughs> Although Uncle Eric might like a back massage. Um, or maybe like something like a trip out when you pay in advance. So, for example, certainly this year, where you've not been able to do as much because of lockdown, it could be that I could... Becky, I'll take you to the cinema next year. I'll take you to see the June James Bond film as your Christmas present. That would be lovely if I liked James Bond. <laughs> oh. I think don't, that's a Christmas present for Julie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't be so ungrateful. <laughs> that would be a very nice present, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> but as an example, it could be something... So rather than you know, paying for it now, you could do a homemade gift for something that will be happening next yeah. year to help spread the cost across. And there's also things like using cashback cash systems like Top Cashback or Quid Quo. And we'll make sure we share the links to both of those, um, Top Cashback and Quid Quo, in our um, podcast write-up. Yeah, the Top Cashback one is really good. I know my husband uses it all the time. Uh, and I think he, he gets quite a lot of good savings through that. So I can um, I can vouch for that one. Well, mm-hmm. someone told me earlier today that they use quid quo and they've had over £2,000 back in the last 12 months. Okay, I don't think he's got that much back. And if he has, he certainly hasn't told me about it. <laughs> maybe he's saving it to spend on your Christmas present, Becky. Ah, yes, maybe. I will let you know in January. <laughs> so moving on from presents is um, is the big day, the food. Oof. And I think this is one of those things where where we all overspend. And again, overindulge. Not just on spending, but eating too. Yes. Absolutely. So just help that Corona stone to grow to two Corona stone. So but I think it's all, again, this is where planning comes in really, really important. So when you do that supermarket shop, plan ahead, make a list. What things do you actually need? Do you really, really need them? And also it's a case of, do you really want all that chocolate? And if you're buying it weeks in advance, is that really a good time to buy it? Will it be there when it comes to Christmas or will you have eaten it? I can already answer that. We brought a box of heroes or a tin of heroes a couple of weeks ago. Already gone. None left. Were they for Christmas, Becky? Yeah, already gone. None this left. I so, don't think they made it through the first night in our house. <laughs> I think if you've got willpower, it's not too bad. You can buy in advance. But if you haven't... I'm going to say, we've got a secret stash. Don't tell my dad, but... We've got a secret stash that have survived the last few weeks. So we're doing okay so far. You're doing better than me. <laughs> to be fair, I hide it from Ralph as well because he's a complete chocolate monster. He actually searches the house for things. Oh, God. Where else do you hide it? Oh, I guess you can't say, actually. Well, I can. It's in the utility room, but I hide it near the washing machine because he doesn't know what the washing machine is. I find it quite safe there. Oh, bless him. He hasn't figured out the washing machine yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, he hasn't, bless him. And also think about... Do you need all those treats? And also, what is the likelihood of you actually getting some of those chocolates as presents as well? So you buy it in and then you get it gifted to you as well. So you've then got double the amount. And then you then have that New Year's resolution that you're going to lose weight in the new year. So you then try and either eat it all or it goes into a cupboard and a year later you find it and it's already nine months out of date. Yeah, yeah. 
Very true. I normally go with the, we've got to eat all of this by New Year's Day. <laughs> Hurry up, eat it fast. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing as well about like with, with your turkey, if you're having turkey, because obviously I know not everybody has the traditional turkey, it's like, do you need a turkey that will feed the 5,000? Probably not, no. I mean, this year, unfortunately, it's looking very likely it's going to be groups of six. So it's like, unless you're really, really hot into your turkey leftovers and are going to be having turkey sandwiches, turkey curry. You have turkey coming out of your ears. Turkey, something else. Maybe I'll have to find a recipe for something with turkey to go with this podcast. It might be <laughs> handy for people. <laughs> That's a very good idea. Actually, I think if you could write, if you could write a, po- um, a whole recipe book, Emma, of turkey leftover recipes, you'll be a bestseller. Turkey cake? Ooh, ooh, not too sure. <laughs> I think that is just a step too far. So okay, I'll take it back. I'll, I, I'll get get rid of that one. Go back to the drawing board. I did have bacon cheesecake once. Ooh, ooh, but that's but that's another story. Yeah, for yeah. another day. <laughs> Definitely for another day. Um, or going back to the supermarkets, um, another way of doing it is a lot of the supermarkets have like a stamp system where you can collect stamps throughout the year, which can then help towards the cost of your um, of your Christmas meal or the new year meal, whichever one works out, but like for your Christmas meal. And um, and also your supermarket vouchers. Certainly, for example, Tesco's is my, is my supermarket on my way home from work, so where I normally go. And I get as vouchers throughout the year in the post. And they've always got really long dates on those. Save those up and spend them at Christmas. It's a really good way of helping with the Christmas um, Christmas spend in the supermarket. I do the same, but with the Sainsbury's Nectar points. So I save them up throughout the year. And then when I do my final shop before Christmas, I normally buy myself a sneaky bottle of something to uh, see me over the Christmas period uh, with my nectar points. So it's like a nice little Christmas treat for me. <laughs> it's surprising how quick the points add up though, isn't it? You can have quite quite a lot to spend when it comes to Christmas if you do it each year. They do soon add up. I think I'm over £20, so... Oh, we shall see. And, and £20 on top of what your normal spend would be... It's you know, a fair chunk off, really, because there's only, well, there's only normally two of us in the house. So £20 does go a long way. No, definitely. Especially if you're cutting back on all the sweet treats. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reckon we'll all be coming in after Christmas going, oh. We'll be it. rolling in. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll be bringing all the tins of biscuits and chocolates in, like, please just eat them, help me, get rid of them. <laughs> oh, no, this is it, so... But and then the other thing, I think that really that covers food. Make sure you plan for it. Make sure you budget for what you're going to do. Try not to overspend on things that you don't think you're going to eat. Think about what things you're likely to get as presents and make sure, you know, and and at the end of the day, it's Christmas. It's about enjoying yourself as well. But try and do it without getting yourself into debt. There's no reason why Christmas can't still be enjoyable, but cost effective as well. So, and there's a couple of after Christmas tips here, which are ones for you to think about. Or oh, actually, this one, sorry, this one's before Christmas, but um, but Christmas cards. So love them or hate them. They've been going and they've been about for I don't know how many years. I have spent, I spent the other week signing 750 Christmas cards for work. I can second that, so, as did I. <laughs> I still have the joy of that one. I'll get them done soon. So we have all the Christmas cards that we send out, but personal Christmas cards over the years, I've had less and less friends or more and more friends, sorry, decide to do the not do Christmas cards, make a donation to charity, which is a very, which is a, a good way of doing it. Really good, yeah. But, uh, but also my only tip with that would be if you're going to do that, let people know early on. Yeah. So there's not that awkward moment where you're sending a card <laughs> and you're not getting one back. Yeah. Yeah, and then the next year you think, oh, I won't bother sending one. I didn't get one last year. And then you get one. <laughs> <laughs> that is very awkward. So, and back on Christmas cards as well is um, is to cut up your Christmas cards. So when I was little, we used to have what my mum called pink and shares. And I used to get the Christmas cards down and we'd, we'd, we'd heavy sigh about anyone who'd written on the left-hand side of the card because <laughs> we obviously couldn't then cut that one up. And, and then we would also then make sure that they could be used... So it's always like we'd, the cards would arrive and it'd be like, oh, that'll make a lovely tag. You'd get two out of that card. Oh, yeah, that was good. If you get two out, it was a right bonus. I remember doing that as well and then being told, well, that's not big enough. You're not going to be able to write on the back of that, are you? <laughs> and it was always great when they were like tree shaped and different shapes. So you are trying to cut them into stars and things. Yeah, definitely. We used to do that. <laughs> so, And it's still it's like a nice way of doing it, keeping your Christmas cards cutting them out putting tags in them it's a nice thing to do or even just you don't even put like a ribbon on you can just sell a tape on the tag as it is and it's a nice way of um, marking up your presents for next year 
Definitely, I really like that one. And I'm guessing you can probably sit and do it. The, the time between Christmas and New Year when you're sat there and you don't really know what to do, you've watched loads of TV, you could sit and even do it then as well. So you've got the job done, ready for the next year. You mean you take your Christmas cards down between Christmas and New Year, Emma? Well, close to New Year, yeah, sometimes. <gasps> not the 6th of January? Shh, not everybody does that anymore, you know. <gasps> I, I must admit, my tree is normally down New Year's Eve. Oh, you humbugs. Yeah, sorry. New year, new start, spring clean. That's exactly <laughs> what I think. I think I just can't face it on New Year's Day to have to then take it all down. So I, I do take mine down normally New Year's Eve. Well, thank you for being in the hot seat today, Julie. Well, that's some really good Christmas tips for us. And not just to use this year, but to use next year too. This is it. And there'll be a link on our podcast details of a Christmas hints and tips guide for you if you wish to download it. Thank you very much. Have a happy Christmas, everybody. Ho, ho, ho. And with that, we've completed today's recipe. We hope you have enjoyed following along with us today and cooking yourself one recipe closer to a financially secure future. If you'd enjoyed today's podcast, you can head over to www.recipeforfinancialsuccess.co.uk where you can find out more information and a full list of ingredients on today's recipe. For more hints, tips and tasters, find us on Facebook at Your Recipe for Financial Success. Thank you for listening and see you next time.